Hello and welcome to the third edition of the Haverhill Public Schools Weekly Update. I'm Superintendent Margaret Murata and I'm joined today by our fabulous Assistant Superintendent, Mr. Michael Fitterling. Hi everybody, thanks for joining us for episode three. This is uh, getting to be uh, our new normal and as much as we would rather be seeing you face to face, this is a great opportunity for us to uh, get some, some information out to our community. Absolutely. Um, and as we, we promised last week to be a little bit quicker um, and we were we were longer, I think, but uh, uh, this week we're going to go uh, try to keep this this video a little bit quicker for you. I know that our updates this week are more limited, even though we do have some guidance um, from the governor. There wasn't a lot in there that was specific to schools. So in many ways, we're still waiting um, on some guidance. Yeah, I think it's one of those things that we want to give information to our families, but we're still waiting for information from the government also on what we can and can't do. So uh, we're all excited to get back to the normal, but we don't know when, are that, when that's going to happen for all of us. Yeah, and I know our, our summer school staff and I'm sure parents of students who may be attending summer school are, are you know, biting at the bit to, to determine whether summer school can be in person or if it has to be remote. I think we would all prefer that it was in person. I think we all believe on the whole that, that our students learn better when they're in the classroom live with teachers, but we have to be aware and safe and know that um, if, if the government says it, it needs to be remote or if the numbers don't look good um, in terms of, of health outcomes um, with the COVID, then you know we, we may have to do remote. We, we're very hopeful that we're gonna know this in the next week or so um, because it, it has a lot of impact on the planning and hiring for us. And I know it does for, for families and what they're gonna do with their summer. Um, so hopefully that'll, um, we'll have guidance for people next week on this video. Yes. I also want to just add that um, we had over 100 families submit videos for our staff appreciation video montage that is now up and live on our Facebook page, a link to uh, the YouTube video. So it's up on our Facebook page and you should have received an email notification with the link also. So thank you so much to all you families, uh, the kids, the parents uh, who helped put these uh, quick 10 second shots together. And uh, we really appreciate you showing our staff their appreciation or your appreciation towards them. So thank you very much. Yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. And I know it's, it's time for a little bit of fun as we're moving towards the end of May and into June. Typically our schools get a little lighter. This is the time of year where we'd be finishing MCAS and we'd be rolling into things like field days and, and more fun things um, at the schools. And I know our our teachers and principals are aware of that and they're, they're looking for the ways to, to keep um, kids interested and engaged um, all through June. Um, I think families can be looking forward to virtual field trips and virtual field days and um, there's some awesome things out there where we can visit museums and zoos and, and historical sites all across the world. Um, so the schools are looking to set those up to try to keep it um, engaging and interesting for our kids as we move into the, the warmer weeks. Um, today, um, on our update, we're going to actually um, meet a couple of our teachers, uh, Rachel Queenan and Heather Cody, two teachers from the Tilton School, who are going to invite us into their virtual classrooms um, and uh, allow us to see what, it, what does it look like um, to teach online to students so we can sort of understand the interaction and the the give and take between um, students and teachers. And, and I appreciate their being willing to share their practice, um, especially it's something that, that's new and, and that none of us are, are really fully prepared for. So I thank them for inviting um, us into their classroom and I thank their students and their students' parents for allowing them to participate in this. Um, and then we'll have also our weekly update um, of the high school, uh, filling us in on next steps towards graduation and senior week as well as a little bit of conversation with Tom O'Brien, our athletic director, to sort of recap um, the spring sports, which didn't really happen, um, and to look forward to fall sports and, and what might be happening in the fall. Um, and, and that, I think, is going to be our update for this week. I think that's a great update, and I, you know, I can't you know, encourage our families enough to send us emails and let us know what you want to see on our future updates, because... Um, we, we keep thinking what, what we think you want to hear about, but we really want to know what you do want to hear about and as far as our schools are concerned. So we'd, we'd be happy to bring more guests on and talk more about um, which the, the issues you want to hear about. Perfect. Thank you, Mr. Perfling. All right. Let's get on to our first guest. 
I'm joined now by Rachel Queenan, second grade teacher at Tilton Lower School. Rachel teaches an integrated classroom at Tilton and um, she's been a, a great addition to our staff and we're, we're very happy to have her here at Haverhill Public Schools. She's got some great skills. And uh, Rachel, would you like to say hello? Hi, yeah, thank you so much for having me. Um, you're about to watch a brief video of what our now online learning model looks like, the remote teaching version. Um, it is linked with our math, um, our math program called Pearson, which is an online platform and it has been great to use because it actually links right up with our Google Classroom. So instead of having to assign it on two different platforms, it's all right there in, in one platform for our Google Classroom. So you're going to watch me do a quick solve and share with some of my students. They'll be doing some read alouds and you'll also see a brief um, translation because I have a level one EL student in my classroom. So um, my aide Annie Marion has been an amazing help and she is going to translate um, the lesson halfway through for me. That's awesome. Thank you. So, so you would send out in the morning a, a link to your lesson and the kids would, would join your lesson each day at a specific time if, if they're available at that time. Um, yep. If not, I guess you would record it for them. Yep. So I'm always available Monday through Friday from 9 to 12 because those are our designated hours. Um, but we do have meetings Mondays through Friday from 9 to 10, 930 to 1030, excuse me. And then Wednesdays is 1030 to 1130 because I have a special ed meeting in the morning. So they're a little bit different, but they seem to work out um, for the most part for many families. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much. And uh, we're going to watch your video now. Great. Thank you. 350 muffins. She baked one batch of 160 muffins and one batch of 145 muffins. How many more muffins does Judy need to bake? Solve any way you choose. Show your work. Great job. Thank you, Adir. You can mute yourself now. I am going to de-dissect the problem. Okay. So I'm going to circle our important numbers. 350 muffins don't forget to circle what 300 what she bakes one batch of 160 muffins and one batch of 145 muffins right i'm gonna, I'm gonna underline that question i can't see the screen how many more muffins hold on evan does jody need to bake you can't see the solvent share, Evan? No. Can everybody else see the solvent share? Yeah. Evan, what does your screen look like? It just shows a, like a circle of you. Nothing, nothing else. It's a All right. It just says presentation on Rachel Queen. All right. Give it a minute. Maybe it's just slow. Let it load, okay? So I'm going to read that question again just so we can remember. Jody wants to bake 350 muffins. She bakes one batch of 160 muffins and one batch of 145 muffins. How many more it's muffins important. does Jody need to bake? What, Evan? It's working now. Oh, great. Okay. okay. Thanks, bud. Thanks for letting me know. So I'm also going to box that word more, right? That's a key word for us. We know we're, we're looking for a missing part, right? So now, if I wanted step one, what would step one be? So we know that she wants to bake 350 muffins. And then she's made two batches of muffins. What do we need to do with those two batches of muffins? My privacy is fine. Thank you. No, give me a hand. What do you think our first step is here? Bella? You should add. Oh. Up in here. This is awkward. Oh, there we go. What ha what should we do, Bella? We should add 160 together with 145. Correct. No, because we want to know 
how many muffins Jody has baked already, right? So we need to figure that out. So step one, this is what I want you to write on your paper if you have it. You need to watch 160 plus 145. So take, I'm going to give you 30 seconds to find the sum because that's, that's how many Jody has baked so far. Emily. So Mande. Tú vas a resolver este problema en dos pasos, ¿ok? El primer paso, tú vas a sumar 160 más 145. ¿Ya lo hiciste? I see one friend with their hand up. Two friends. Three. Cuando tenga la respuesta, puede levantar la mano, Emily. Samsung Galaxy 25. You're adding 160 plus 145. All right. Povita, honey, can you just mute? Okay. Thank you. All right. Let's see. Landon, what did you get for a final answer? Three hundred and five. Who else got three hundred and five? Nice job. Wonderful. So we have completed our first, we have completed our first step. So we know that Jody has baked three hundred and five muffins so far. But we also know that she wants to bake 350. So how can we figure out how many more she needs to bake? You can raise your hand if you want to share your thought. She wants to bake 350. She has baked 305 so far. So how do we figure out how many more she has to bake? Wow, Rachel, that's really impressive. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Can you tell me a little bit about how for you as a teacher, it differs from your regular classroom? Is there anything that's easier? I can see that there are a lot of things that are more difficult. Yeah, so it's been, um, it's definitely been a learning curve for everyone, I'm sure many teachers, parents, families can agree with that. But um, it has gotten easier. I like the fact that there's a lot of chances for me to provide feedback to my students through Google Classroom. And I really like that I can just go into one specific area and see which assignments they've done and which they haven't. As to where in school, sometimes I have my data collected in different areas. So it's nice to be able to go into one area. Um, it is a little hard, obviously, without the interaction with the students as a huge part of especially with the with the little the little kids that they love the interaction the daily hugs the smiles the support from everyone around them so building that community was definitely a tough part to do again but now we have our guidelines our expectations and as you saw in the video they they really do a great job just participating and letting other people have turns and taking in some of the things that we learned in the building like our number talk hand symbols with the that's agree they agree with it so things like that, they're able to integrate into the um, virtual learning model. So it hasn't been easy, but they've definitely done a wonderful job. And I'm really proud of the progress that they've made so far. That's awesome. Thank, thank you, Rachel. And thank you for all your hard work. It's clear that the kids are making progress because you've put a lot of time and effort into things. So Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. And we're now joined by Heather Cody, fourth grade teacher at Tilton Upper. Heather, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, it's a pleasure. I appreciate the other night you were good enough to uh, present at school committee with your uh, colleague, Rachel, but we wanted to get it out to a little bit more larger audience and let people really know what's going on in the classroom. So thank you for sharing your practice with us. I know it's not easy. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, so um, we have a, a really great video 
of you. Um, I think it's doing a read aloud. Can you tell us a little bit about um, the read aloud and, and what you're trying to accomplish here in this remote learning lesson? Yeah, absolutely. So my video starts out with a little preview of how we still say good morning to each other and start our day, um, you know, as much as we would as we can right now in the classroom with like open circle. We greet each other and then I give them an overview of the day for what work will be due. Um, and then I teach live uh, interactive read alouds as often as I can, at least twice a week. I have pretty good participation. Um, if 100% can't make it, there's always a recording available too. Um, but the lesson that I am going to show for you is a read aloud for the story Crickwing. Um, and in my class, we always use a bunch of hand signals that I made up for figurative language. So there's like puns, idioms, similes, metaphors. Um, so I'm able to still see the kids. They've practiced that with me for now two years since I looped with them. Um, but they show me those signals the whole time I'm reading and then we pause every now and then to talk about something or define some tiered vocabulary. Um, and when we wrap things up, we just say goodbye like we normally would and kind of get on with the rest of our day, but I'm still in the link whenever they need me to pop back into the meet if they need to ask questions or just want to say hi, things like that. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. We're going to let folks see the video now and we'll, we'll come back afterwards and wrap it up. Okay, sounds good. All right. All right, let's do our good mornings. Good morning, Kaliani. Good morning, Miss Cody. Good morning, Brittany. Good morning, Kaliani. Good morning, Elijah. Good morning, Brittany. Good morning, Nelfi. Good morning, Elijah. Good morning, Alion. Good morning, Nelfi. Good morning, Tyson. Good morning, Elian. Good morning, Brianna P. Good morning, Tyson. Good morning, Alex. Um, I just want to give you a quick overview about your day. All right, so let's take a look at today's schedule. Okay, <clears throat> so your details are at the top. Make sure you do read them because there's a lot of important information for you. You had your morning meeting video already. Uh, hopefully you have started math. That was roughly from nine to 10 this morning, the 12.3 video and buddy practice. Uh, there's the very cool down here, this place value chart. If you click on this, it will show you um, an interactive place value chart. So I'm around our goal is to be looking for the figurative language. So I need to see you up with your hands available so that you can show the hand signals that we use to track all our figurative language. Right, Bella? All right, wonderful. So make sure you are showing me the figurative language that you're hearing. And I might stop every now and then to either ask you a question or to kind of have a little um, conversation with you. So feel free to either raise your hand or unmute and take turns with each other like we always do, okay? All right. Far below the great forest canopy lies a shadowy world that many insects call home. Among the damp clutter of fallen leaves and branches, leaf cutting ants toil all day while large cockroaches await their evening search for food. What do you think toil means? I'll reread that part. Leaf cutting ants toil all day while cockroaches await their evening search for food. Toil. Elijah? Toil means like move around. Move around. Anybody else? Brittany? They work. Yeah, so they move around and they work really hard all day. They toil all day. Pow, swoosh. Thank you for showing the onomatopoeia, Elian. Ricardo, yes. A sharp-eyed monkey clobbered Crickwing and swiped his sculpture. Crickwing dived for cover. I only let him get away with that because he's so big, he grumbled, cowering under a rotten log. Crickwing hid until the next night when hunger drove him out to search for a meal. But as soon as he had added the final flower petal to his dinner, an enormous scaly lizard nearly gulped him down. 
Crickwing dodged and the lizard took off with his edible artwork. Another masterpiece ruined, Crickwing panted. I'm starving and my wing aches. I don't know if I can take this much longer. But how long can a cockroach go without eating? Three months. Three months. Crickwing inched closer. There's something about these eensy little critters that just bugs me. Bugs me, right? Nice pun. Why isn't anyone bothering these little guys? He placed a spiny leg across their path. Well, let's see what happens now, he laughed. Have a nice trip. See you next fall. What do you think a peace offering is that these leaf cutter ants need to give the army ants a peace offering? It, it's just like um, the bug's life that they have to give something or like an offer to keep them safe mm -hmm. or they want to attack. Exactly. Yep. Making that connection, that, that text to media connection with a bug's life. Definitely. The queen peeked at the dawn and blinked drowsily. I declare today a holiday, she yawned. Here, here, said Crickwing, and for the first time in colony history, the leaf cutters took a day off. All right, so your activity today is to use parts of the figurative language that I already pulled out of the text and put into your three column chart. You're going to tell me what type of figurative language it was, and you were good about showing all your hand signals, right? I recorded myself earlier reading it if you want to hear it a second time or pause at any of those points, okay? And then in the third column, you're going to tell me how do you know, right? It was a simile because it used, what do you think? A simile compares two things using somebody on new like or as, everybody's got it. Yep, exactly. So you'll explain, I know it was onomatopoeia because, so please make sure you're doing full sentences, okay? So it's just, all right. So I'm going to have you say goodbye to each other, except Bella, you're gonna wait on this call because you and Miss B are gonna do your check-in on this live meet. The rest of my friends, look on our Google Classroom on the stream. I'm going to post another meeting link. You won't use the top because Miss B and Bella are gonna be in here, but you can click on the new link if you wanna come chat with me at all or if you have any questions, okay? All right, so unmute, say goodbye to each other. Bella, don't forget, you're sticking here. Bye. 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 Have a good day. Bye. Thank you once again, that was really, Fantastic. I could ask what, how are the kids adapting to it? I know the teachers um, are, are starting to get into a groove and, and really we're all getting better with the technology, but how about the kids and the parents? How are they doing at home? I think it started off, you know, it was harder for all of us, for the, the teachers who maybe didn't have as much experience with Google Classroom, um, but it was, you know, we really learned and so have the kids. The kids, largely our students, are very technologically based anyway. Um, so I think that there have been times where they've been able to be like, oh no, if you wanna present this, make sure, you know, they, they kind of teach me at the same time. Um, and families, you know, I've, I've definitely gotten a lot of feedback that at first it was stressful and it, it felt like a lot, but just as with anything, the more you do it, the more comfortable you get. And we're really in the swing of things now to the point where it's, I don't wanna say seamless because with technology, it never can be, um, there's always, blips, there's days when Wi-Fi drops or, you know, we have to try something again. Um, but for the most part, it's just been really impressive to watch everybody's skills sharpen right now. That's great, Heather. And how about participation? I know um, we, we can't, sort of came out of the gate pretty strong with participation. Are we able to keep that up in your class or what, what have you been doing to sort of ramp up the excitement? Yeah, so I mean, with the nicer weather, of course, you know, it was a concern that we were gonna get a drop off in participation. Um, I will say, you know, it's only Tuesday right now, but I have seen still really strong participation. The kids who always are in are still always in. Um, I'm getting the majority of the work turned in too. I would say it's not coming in between nine and 12, um, but I've never needed it to, you know, whenever it comes in, which is best for the family, depending on their own situation. 
Um, but work is still coming in and we have some exciting, you know, parts that we're trying to do for June with um, different ways of making everything not quite as computer based and giving them opportunities to do more like drawing and um, writing and taking pictures and, and things like that. So there will still be, you know, online learning going on, but it might look a little different um, and be a little bit more creative for them going forward. So I have given them that incentive that, you know, we have to really push hard for a couple more weeks and then we'll start to really maybe change um, and adjust our, our learning to be more creative for, you know, how things would always go in June where you kind of get to really put on those those creative assignments and, and interact that way. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. And, and thank you to, to Rachel and uh, to several hundred other teachers all over Haverhill who are um, getting this done every day. Um, you two are, are great examples of the work that, that are getting done, but by no means is it, is it just you, right? There's, there's so many people out there um, figuring this out every day. And um, it's just a big thank you to everyone. Awesome, thank you so much. Yeah, it's, it's been incredible to see the collaboration across all the different grade levels, all the different schools. It's, it's definitely a team effort. All right, go team. And Mr. Glenn Burns, principal of High, Haverhill High School is gonna join us now. It looks like he is outside of Haverhill High School as we're beginning the preparation for a senior week in our graduation. Mr. Burns. Yeah, so uh, today is a big day on, on campus of Haverhill High School. They're, they're putting in all the, the flowers, uh, redoing all the beds. The signs, as you can see up over my shoulder, um, our new signs on our, our uh, light posts that uh, celebrate our, our, our scholars' successes um, throughout um, their past couple of years. So as uh, individuals come on campus, they'll, uh, they'll see their kids um, in the pictures representing our tradition, athletics, uh, scholarship, the different opportunities and, and uh, creativity that has been exhibited over the, the past few years um, through our plays, um, trips, um, and academic opportunities they've had. That's fabulous. Um, I know you're trying to keep tradition alive as much as you can in a, in a virtual um, graduation ceremony, but I, I think um, there's a uh, regalia pickup coming soon and we're gonna have a graduation ceremony, is that correct? Yeah, so on uh, May 26th, um, all seniors between 11 and one can pick their cap and gown up at the pool building. Um, the, their teachers will be lining the, the driveway into, the, into campus um, to celebrate them with signs and, and um, I'm sure noisemakers and whatnot. Um, and then we start graduation actually for certain scholars that night at two o'clock. At two o'clock, we'll start filming their graduation in front of the thinker uh, with a stage and a tent. And uh, that's what we're putting together now. Um, on Thursday, that stuff will all start coming together where they'll have the tent up and the stage um, so we can start um, doing, putting all the final touches on it. That's great. So we're having a, a live in-person graduation, but it will be socially distanced. And my understanding is spread out over the course of three days so we can get everybody in and allow their families to, to see the kids receive their diploma. Yeah, actually, it's going to be from Tuesday to Saturday um, because Saturday. we have so many graduates uh, this year. And it will run from 10 to 5 on um, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and from about 10 to 3 on Saturday. And, and while we're, we're giving the times out, obviously we can't have crowds come watch, just the families, but um, on uh, June 5th on our graduation day, we will have a virtual viewing party for everyone to be able to see the whole ceremony um, at the time um, that it would have um, typically occurred live on uh, Channel 99, is that right? Correct, yeah, and we're really excited about that. Um, we're, we're looking to have a, a lot of people tune into that as we did our coffee house this past week. That video's had over 5,000 views um, and a lot of comments from uh, people all across the country that, that have enjoyed it. Yeah, the coffee house was a lot of fun. I had some, some good laughs and I was really impressed with some of the talent, so. We're doing, we're doing good things. Good work, Mr. Burns, and thank you, your staff and all the students who I know have done a lot of planning and are doing a lot of work to get this done. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a real team effort from uh, parents, um, 
that have really stepped up with some great ideas and, and willingness to support us. Um, student government and student council for all of their planning. And um, today we actually start our sign delivery. Um, so in about an hour, we'll have teachers here picking up their signs. So our, uh, our, our scholars will be excited for, for that. And, um, and our families have really been looking forward to that. So there is a lot going on here at the high school. All right, fine job. We'll be excited to hear more later. We'll, we'll talk to you next week. Great, thank you. Have a good day. All right, bye-bye. Hello. I am joined now by Tom O'Brien, Athletic Director at Haverhill High School, here to share with us some insights about what's been happening at Haverhill High and what we might be able to think about moving forward um, as we move into the summer and continue towards the fall. Welcome, Tom. Hello, everybody. So um, first of all, we'll start with our spring sports. Obviously, um, it was a major disappointment for all of our student athletes to not have a spring season, particularly our senior student athletes. So uh, our coaching staff has been doing what they can, and we've been trying to brainstorm, come up with great ideas to sort of help them through this difficult time, especially without having sports. Um, so our coaches have been doing some great work. Uh, anything from holding weekly Zoom meetings with the entire team. Uh, one coach even scheduled a magician to, to entertain them. And um, others are posting videos daily on social media, Twitter, Facebook of, you know, past events, kind of celebrating um, some great memories from their careers. Um, this week, uh, some we usually hold a ceremony when kids commit to compete at the next level. And so this week we're going to start posting some pictures of some sort of virtual signings that we did uh, so we can celebrate their, their moving on and competing at the next level. Um, and then our coaches are, you know, recommending staying fit and, and different exercises they can do um, on a daily basis, um, you know, and, and keeping them busy. Um, so I applaud our coaches um for, for coming up with all these ways and working hard to, to keep them engaged and, and again get them through this i i appreciate your your um calling out the coaches tom i think when people think of of coaches maybe they don't realize how much more they are than just um you know guiding kids through the sports how much they are mentors and they keep kids on track and make sure um, that their grades are in place and that they're they're doing what they need to do every day um, so I, I think it's important to shout out our coaches. Yeah, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't agree more, um, Dr. Murata. They just, you know, I get to see it on a daily basis, how much they pour their hearts into these jobs. And, you know, they, they work year round on, uh, and, and they mean so much to a lot of these student athletes. And without sports, um, you know, quite frankly, some of these students wouldn't be coming to school. Um, and, and in some cases, these coaches are parent figures for these, for these student athletes. So, um, so, so I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah, absolutely. I know I personally wouldn't have, uh, I'm not sure I would have made it through high school without track. I, I really needed um, that structure and that support, someplace to burn my energy and something to keep, uh, keep coming back for every day that I was good at. So that was, that was helpful to me, I understand. So, so thank you to all our coaches. I mean, and, and what are we doing? Like, I know you don't know, none of us know, but sort of what are the rumors? What are, what are we thinking about? Um, and maybe how can kids stay in shape in this sort of uncertain world? Yeah, as far as to answer your last question to stay in shape, I think a lot of our coaches have been in touch with different workout routines. You know, it's different for each sport, um, kind of how they exercise and, and, but just getting out and moving, um, you know, it's so important. Um, there's been the sort of the, the emergence of esports now and, and playing online games. It's actually become competitive sport and some schools have it. Um, I think it's something we would look at, but we never want to take away that physical activity. That's, that's just so important. So um, moving on to the fall, um, we're hopeful for a fall season. Obviously, there's so much uncertainty, as you know, with the same as with the schools and, and everything else up in the air. Um, there's, there's a lot of uncertainty, but with the governor's announcement on Monday um, of his kind of re-entry in, in the different phases, as part of the phase two, he did mention the return of youth sports, um, maybe with limited crowds or, or no crowds or and, and with certain, you know, uh, limitations. But he did mention the return of youth sports, and then in – Phase three, the full return of youth sports. So uh, that gives us a little bit of optimism. Um, I think there's still a lot of details we work out as, as far as that goes. Um, the MIAA, which is the Massachusetts Interscholastic Athletic Association, they govern all high school sports. So obviously we remember the MIAA. Um, they just yesterday announced the formation of a task force 
uh, to kind of look at the details of each sport, whether it be practices, transportation, locker rooms, that sort of thing. Um, so it'll be interesting what they find. Um, but again, and they've also taken some steps, um, you know, administrative type things that could be a headache, uh, like academic eligibility. Uh, typically, they have set standards that students have to meet. They've waived those for next fall already and said it'd be up to the individual schools and principals to, to, to determine their academic eligibility. So that's good. Um, and as, as well as physicals, the sports medicine committees right now typically have to provide a physical that's valid from within one year. They're trying to extend that by a year, given that students will be have a hard time scheduling their physicals and that sort of thing um, with doctor's offices being closed. And, and, and so it'd be hard to schedule physical between now and the fall. So they're looking at that as well, little things like that. Um, we have a group that uses our pool, Solo Aquatics. Um, so they're looking forward to the reopening of our pool, obviously, and they've already got this pretty impressive plan in place on how they would handle the, the swim portion of things. You know, I won't get into much detail, but USA Swimming's kind of put out some guidelines and, the, you know, the lanes are actually six feet apart and they would mark off and students wouldn't use locker rooms. They just wear their suit to the pool and, and wear it home. And um, so it's interesting. So I think each sport will kind of do that. And um, again, we just got to hope for the best. Um, we, we are working hard as we do this time of year to plan for the fall. You know, our coaches are preparing. Uh, I've been working on all the fall schedules and creating a full fall schedule in the hopes that we have a full season. And then um, if we have to scale it back from there, we will. That's awesome, Tom. Thank you. So it sounds like um, flexibility, adaptability, um, and a little bit of fingers crossed. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to have, you know, I don't know, maybe maybe not every season running this fall, depending on how much contact there is, but a, but a nice variety uh, of sports running for, for kids to choose from and maybe try something a little different. Yeah, that, that's going to be interesting. You know, there's there are certain sports that I think you could run safely, like across country in one way or another, or um, golf, certainly, with golf courses already being open, golf's one you can manage. And then football's at the far end of the spectrum with the, the locker rooms and the crowding and the, and the contact and that sort of thing. So it'll be interesting if they do choose to run some sports, not others, modify some sports. It's, it's, it's a lot of, if it's up in the air right now. But um, again, hope for the best. All right. Well, I appreciate your joining us today, despite sort of not knowing everything. Um, hopefully, as you start to, you know, hear more things and, and gather some information on what might be coming next, you'll come back and joining us. We'll, we're doing this every week till the end of the year. So hopefully you can have some more guidance by then. Great. I'd, I'd be happy to provide that. And, and I just want to add one more sort of yeah. bit of good news, um, if I could. The, the construction on two big projects at the high school are still ongoing. And um, we're replacing our entire pool roof, which, which many know has been leaking for, for some time now and created some problems on the inside. So that'll be fixed once and for all uh, within the next couple of weeks. And our track project is coming to an end. Um, you know, they're actually doing the paving on the project this week. Uh, it's a million dollar um, project. We're going to have a brand new state of the art track. Um, so hopefully it, it, it coincides with the timing of opening up athletic facilities and we can open that up and and the public can use it and our, our teams can use it and, and benefit from this great new facility at the high school. So that'll be an exciting kind of welcome back gift for us. Yeah, that's awesome. Good, good news is always welcome, Tom. And it sounds like we're going to have some great new facilities in sports that, that we'll probably be running, that we'll be able to, to, to work. So that'll be exciting for everyone. Let's hope so. so. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Take care. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye. Wraps it up for today, folks. I really appreciate your joining us here today. And I want to give a special thanks to our guests today, to teachers Heather Cody and Rachel Queenan for inviting us into their classrooms, for Mr. Glenn Burns for sharing with us uh, what's going on at Haverhill High School and, and all the work that's going into having a really fun and fulfilling graduation and senior week for our, our graduates, as well as for Mr. Tom O'Brien, our athletic director, who joined us to discuss um, what's occurred thus far with, with spring sports um, or the lack of spring sports and what we may be able to look forward to as far as sports go in the, uh, in the fall and beyond. If there are things that you would like to hear about, please let us know. We are happy to discuss any topics or to invite any of our, our staff uh, to join us at any time. You can email me at uh, superintendent at Haverhill 
ps.org and, and let me know what you'd like to hear about. Um, until next week, I say thank you for joining us and be well. <laughs>